All right, we've been talking quite a lot about the performance of memory, but you also have to be able to look at a memory stick like this and identify when you read something on it, how fast is it? I mean, what's it capable of? Only by reading that and by, you know, looking at my vendor, wherever I buy my memory from, only by being able to understand what I'm reading on the memory modules or on the packaging or whatever, uh, can I identify whether or not it'll, it'll go in my computer, whether it's compatible, whether the speeds are right and so forth. So here we're going to be taking a look at the common performance measures that we'll look at for that. And for this, I'm going to start with something you don't have to know if you're an A-plus student. And that would be DDR, and I'm going to use DDR200. There's a lot of different ones. I'm, I haven't listed all of them. They really wouldn't all fit on here. Uh, but here are some common measures that we can use. So double data rate, we already talked about what that is. Remember, it, it was able to send and receive memory data on the rising and the falling cycle. So what is DDR200? Uh, it's kind of ingenious. It has the ability not only to take advantage of uh, sending and receiving data in and out of memory on the top of the cycle and the bottom of the cycle, it's also able to split the signal. So now it can do it on top, bottom, and it doubles it, okay? So now in addition to doing it on the top and the bottom of the signal, we've doubled it to give us an effective speed, effective clock speed of 200, okay? You, what you do is you, take, you start with a multiple here or a factor of 100, and then you just multiply it because we know that we've been able to split the signal here and get another whole cycle out of it. Now let's just stay to the left of this table that I've got up here, and we'll continue on here in a moment, but uh, let's take a look at this next one, DDR2. Now, that one uh, would be the next generation of this. What did it do? It figured out a way to double it again. So instead of getting just 200, now we're able to multiply it times two again, and it just, you know, splits things up again is all it's really doing there in the uh, in the wavelengths, in the, uh, in the cycle in our megahertz. Now we've got 400 uh, effective clock speed out of it. That can also be viewed as 200 and 400 Mega transfers is another way to describe that. You might see it described that way. How about DDR3? Now, with this one, this is, these ones right here, by the way, are A-plus relevant. Uh, with this one, it's 1,600. How did we arrive at 1,600? Well, we just took all of this, and I skipped a step. There's also an 800 in there, but I didn't have enough room for all of it. Uh, we just have a 100 times 2 is 200, times 2 is 400, times 2 is 800, times 2 is, yeah, 1,600. So now we've arrived at 1,600 mega transfers per second. And you'll see that listed as DDR3-1600. Next one, you just do the same thing, except we're multiplying that again. So now we, we were at 1,600 at this level. Now we multiply that times 2, we're at 3,200. Uh, we were at 3,200 here. So now we multiply it by 2 again, and now we're at 6,400. And that's pretty much the, the top of what you can arrive at in current memory with DDR5. And what I've seen is the fastest so far is 6,400. And again, it's just figuring out multiple ways to split up these uh, megahertz cycles into, into smaller and smaller slices and being able to send data simultaneously within those slices. Now, let's also take a look at further to the right here. So starting again with this one here, uh, this module might be named. You, you'll see it named different ways, but this might be called PC 1600. What does that mean? Well, we have to understand that in computing, we work with bits, which are just like this, eight bits of data, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, I think I wrote eight, yeah. So that might, that might represent something in data, okay? Now, uh, together, all eight bits equals one byte, okay? So I can look at this whole thing collectively as a single byte. When it comes to the PC module name, what it does is it takes whatever my DDR rating is here, which is 200, and you multiply it by eight because that's how many is in a byte, right? So you take this times eight and that gives you this PC name, all right? Uh, what's the data rate for that? Well, that will be the, uh, really the same. Whatever the module name is, whatever we see on the end of it, that's the same as how many megabytes per second can be transferred in and out of that memory module. So a DDR200 is capable of transmitting 1,600 megabytes, not megabits, by the way. Megabits would be in network traffic, for example. Megabytes per second. Uh, so here we have DDR2, and that is capable of 400 uh, clock speed, remember, but which 400 times 8? 32. So that would give us a PC2 uh, module name would be capable of 3,200 megabytes per second. Again, these are the same. And then you can see we go further down and further down. 
until finally, uh, at this time of this recording, one of the fastest ones you can get would be 51,200 megabytes per second. Wow, that's an amazing throughput there. Now, the other thing you'd want to know is probably the voltages of some of these. Some of these can be different than what you see here. So some of these you might see is DDR3, you know, L. It might have an L after it. That would be low voltage. And different vendors are able to get the voltage lower, provided the motherboard is compatible with it. And it, uh, you just I just don't know what the, that will be. Uh, it might vary from chip to, from manufacturer to manufacturer and so forth. But you might see, like I said there, an L. But generally speaking, a DDR3 will use 1.5 volts, and it has 240 pins. For some reason... CompT is very particular about knowing this particular minutia over on the right, so I would put a little star over here on how many pins, and I would, wouldn't hurt to also know the voltage for each one of these. Okay, so DDR4 would give us 1.2 volts. By the way, we go down and down in the number of voltage. That's only because of advances in technology and the ability to keep the memory refreshed. Remember, it has registers that have to be refreshed. And in order to keep the data in there, used to be we would need more voltage. On older chips, we'd have to have uh, 5 volts of, of uh, power. Now they've just been able to whittle it down further and further. But these will use 288 pins. So the notch location in DDR3 is in a slightly different place than in DDR4, which actually uses two notches. And DDR5 also uses two notches. But they're, again, slightly offset, so you cannot install any of these in other DDR slots. I can't install DDR3 and a DDR4 or 5. I can't install a DDR5 and a DDR4 or a DDR3 and so forth. But anyway, the reason why I bring that up is because let's go to DDR5. It's a little even lower voltage, but it has the same pin number as DDR4. That does not mean that they are cross-compatible. The motherboard supports DDR4. You have to install only DDR4, not DDR3, not DDR5. Now, to kind of summarize a lot of this, I thought I'd just go to a vendor's website. Uh, I'm at Corsair.com, but... I don't necessarily endorse them. They do make really good memory, though. There's also Kingston. I'm trying to think of uh, Crucial. There's lots of different vendors out there. But anyway, with this one, let's just take a look at it, okay? What have we got here? We have a kit, okay? It has two memory modules in it and 32 gigabytes each, all right? Uh, this is DDR4 RAM. So, by the way, pop quiz, how many, how many pins would be in that DDR4 RAM? Yep, 288. What's the voltage that you normally see in DDR4? For RAM. Yep, 1.2 volts. Okay. Uh, how about this? Uh, it's a 3200 megahertz. So, knowing that, how much data throughput could there be there? Remember, we take the megahertz that we see there, we multiply it by eight. I can't do that in my head, but uh, I can show you where we would find the result here in a moment. Here, we can also choose a different kit if we want. Uh, so, notice that the kit here is two 32 megabyte, or two, excuse me, two 32 gigabyte modules, but look how far you can go on this thing. Look, I could go up to 256. That would be eight 32 gigabyte modules. <laughs> how much would that add up to? 1,234. <laughs> oh my gosh. Whew. Uh, that won't even actually be fully compatible, I don't think, with my particular motherboard, but um, I should see if CBT Nuggets will buy it for me anyway. And, you know, why? Because I want it. That's why. Uh, also, it's colorful. Isn't that cool? Look, these things have uh, like LEDs on them. You can actually, they have a little software piece that you can synchronize with these so you can have it flash different colors and do all kinds of, you know, fancy little things. These gaming RAM devices are, are pretty cool. Anyway, let's get on to the technical specs here. If I go to the tech specs right over here, then we can see that, again, we get more details out of it. Now, look over to the right here. It says the SPD voltage is 1.2 volts. That's, again, the standard DDR4 voltage. These particular memory modules are designed to handle what we call overclocking. That means you apply extra voltage to them and you can get a performance boost out of them by doing so. It's been tested up to 1.35. So what you'll do is you would go into your BIOS and if the BIOS supports this overclocking, uh, then you can say instead of 1.2 volts, I want 1.35 volts. Now, could you go to 1.36, 1.37, 1.4? I don't know. Uh, higher. Yes, you could. But the vendor does not support it beyond that. They have tested it up to 1.35. Anything beyond that, you can burn it out, generate too much heat because added electricity adds more heat. Heat is a kind of an enemy of your computer. Okay, it, it will have a shorter life generally if it gets too hot. Also, let's look at the speed here again. Remember, it's 3,200 megahertz. 
we want to know the uh, data throughput of that, then we would multiply that by eight. That gives us this 25,600 megabytes per second. You do also have to see if your motherboard will support it. Look at the motherboard manual. I would actually do that online. I would go to the online version because there may be updates. There might be BIOS updates and so forth. Uh, if you have an older BIOS, it might not support this particular memory. So if you update your BIOS, which we'll, we could talk about that in another, in another skill. If you update your BIOS, then it might unlock features, which would then make it compatible here. You also have to make sure that it would support whichever uh, processor type that you have. Because remember, it's kind of a direct path between your memory and your processor, so you need to make sure that it's compatible. So that's a quick rundown on the nomenclature with the different DDR versions of memory. Primarily, you need to know about DDR3, 4, and 5, and how to read it, how to interpret the speeds, the mega transfers of it, the total data throughput that you can have. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from CBT Nuggets. Also, if you're new to IT or are interested in an IT career, visit cbtnuggets.com and sign up for a free trial.